Pantone color of 2023 has been announced. Drum roll, please. And that color is magenta. I even changed my lights for this one. Specifically, that color is Viva Magenta, and we'll get into that in a second. I want to show you five things you can do in Photoshop with the wonderful and magnificent color of magenta. If you're one of my subscribers, you know that I use this quite often, either in color grading or even for processes that I do in Photoshop, and I'm going to show you those here. But first, let's actually take a look at the meaning of the color magenta. Magenta, what does it represent? Magenta is the color of universal harmony and emotional balance. It contains passion, power, and energy of red restrained by introspection and quiet energy of violet. It promotes compassion, kindness, and cooperation. The color magenta is a color of cheerfulness, happiness, and contentment and appreciation. Most people feel more optimistic in its company. The color is wonderful. And the people over at Pantone have stated that the specific color that we're looking at here is Viva Magenta. Viva Magenta is the Pantone color of 2023. The first thing I want to show you is how we can use the color magenta to help us easily see things like blend if and masking. If you've ever worked with blend if before, you know, it can be kind of tricky to understand exactly what's happening with that blend if on your image. I've got several blend if tutorials here on my channel, so I'm not going to go too far into that, but I do want to show you how you can make this overlay for anything that deals with masking or blend if. So we're going to put on a solid color overlay here. We're going to change this to like a cyanish color. Now, let's say I was color grading with this. I want to change this to something like soft light for a really quick color grade. So I say to myself, hmm, I don't really like what's happening with the dark areas with this color grade. So let me protect any of the underlying layers, darkest areas. I double click this. I'll go into blend if right over here and on the underlying layer, I'll move this over and I start to see exactly where that cyanish color is going to place itself on top of this image. I'll even go a little bit over to the midtones like this. Now, that's all fine and well. We can see that we color graded this pretty well with this. If we turn the preview on and off, it looks a little bit better, right? But how do we know exactly where that blend if is applying itself? Well, that's where we turn a color overlay on here. And when I go into the color overlay, I want to make sure that this is set to the color magenta. What that's going to tell me now is that anything that I see in magenta is going to be what blend if or any of this layer right here is actually applying itself to. So when I press OK, I can turn this color overlay on and off and I don't see that anymore, but I actually do still see that cyan color grade that's on there. This shows me exactly where it is. Now, this is really cool, too, because you can actually be used in conjunction with something like masking. Let's say that I want to brush away the areas on the bird itself where this is affecting. I'm going to change my brush to the color black use a relatively small brush here, and then just kind of paint on here. So not only do we see what's happening with blend if, we also see what's happening within the mask. And I'm not doing anything really crazy here. I could have made a better selection for this. This is just for demonstration purposes to show you that this color overlay shows you not only what's happening with the blend if, but anything that's happening with this layer as it applies to the rest of the stack. It's a phenomenal way to use the color magenta because it's a lot easier seen than any other color in our images because we typically don't see a whole lot of bright, vibrant magenta like this in our photographs. The second thing I want to show you with the color magenta is how you can use it as a way to mark up images. And you might be thinking, well, Blake, this is a like, really, you're, you're explaining this? Well, check this out. Let's say I was critiquing this photograph for one of the members of F64 Elite, and I went to the normal red pen that some people use, and I start painting on this photograph saying that I like the way that we're brought into this image right from here, and then we have the water that comes out this way, and so on and so forth. I don't really like the color red being used for that because of what we attribute to the color red. Now, if you've ever been in grade school, which many of us have, when you go to grade school and they start marking up your papers with red, I immediately think of like F, like failure. Ooh, I don't like it. So what I tend to use in my critique sessions is not necessarily a red pen. It's a magenta pen. So I can do essentially the same thing by showing the person what I like about the image, but I do it with a color that is more compassionate as we've learned about the color magenta. So you thinking about color theory, it's just a more friendly way to mark up images without making pe people feel bad about the decisions that they made in their photograph. The third thing I want to teach you about magenta is how effective it can be for foliage. And you're like, Blake, I would never turn my foliage magenta unless you're maybe photographing an infrared image. That's where it's acceptable. 
But Magenta plays an extremely powerful role in the foliage images that you have in your portfolio. And I'm gonna show you on this image. So if we wanted to make the foliage in our image more vibrant, what we need to do is we need to consider what is making it not vibrant. And when we consider that, we can use that to amplify the colors in the image. So we have to think about color theory here. The opposite on the color wheel from the color green is the color magenta. So anytime our greens are not very strong, it's possibly because there is too much magenta in that color green and it's holding it back from being its highest potential of green. Case in point, watch this. We'll go to the selective color adjustment layer. I'm gonna select the color green. And here, when I look at the amount of magenta here, if I decrease the amount of magenta that is in this color green, it is going to make these greens more vibrant and lively and probably a little bit more accurate to what actual green would look like in a forest. Before, after. Now, this might be too much, and I get that 100%. So I would probably drop this a little bit, but just give it a little boost so that it can be more green and take away what's holding it back. Now, you could also round this off by adding a little bit of yellow to it. That can make it look good as well. Here's tip 3B for you. If the color in your foliage is a little bit too strong, you can come into the color green, just as we did here, to reduce the amount of magenta there, and we can increase the amount of magenta, which will subdue that color and make it less potent. Why this is happening is because anytime we use the complementary color in the color that we have selected, it is going to make it less saturated or appear less saturated by mixing in its complement. So we can control how potent foliage is either with or without magenta. If we take magenta away, it's gonna be a more potent green. If we add magenta, it's gonna be a less potent green. Tip number four with the color magenta. Magenta can be a phenomenal color used on sunsets to make those skies a lot more vibrant and bold and lively. So looking at this photograph here, I like the sunset that we have here, but I do think that I can give this sky a little bit more of a uh, bold, vibrant magenta flair to it, which as we've learned, it can make the viewer feel a little bit more content or even happy when they see that color in the image. So they might even know it's happening, but watch this. We'll go select and we'll go sky. And once I get a good selection for this sky, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a solid color fill on top of this. Just go solid color. And when I get this solid color, I'm just gonna leave it as a straight magenta for now. I could change this later, but I'm gonna change it to the soft light blend mode. Now I'm gonna drop the opacity here by about you know 50%, maybe even a little bit more. And we look at just how much more color and life is added to this sunset just by using magenta with a subtle hint of that soft light blend mode. Now this is the fullest potency of the color magenta. So we could also, now that we have it set up, double click on this solid color fill and slowly start to add a little bit more darkness or lightness to that color magenta so it doesn't appear quite as strong and potent and fully saturated. I use this in my sunset images almost all of the time. I'm not gonna say all the time, but I would say like 90% of the time, I'm gonna add some magenta to my sunset skies. So for my last and final tip, I wanna show you how you can globally color grade your image for a really phenomenal lasting effect. Now, global color grading is great when you have a lot of different colors that are happening in the image and you wanna unify them with one color. For this purpose, we wanna unify it with the color magenta. Again, a color that is lively, energetic, compassionate, friendly, and optimistic. So this sunset image that you're seeing here, I actually generated using Mid Journey AI. I really enjoy this beautiful landscape that was created, but I wanna color grade it and unify these colors. As you can see here, there is a little bit of magenta that's in this sky above, but we have blue and we have orange and a little bit of like the cyanish color. So there already is a, a, a color balance Balance that's happening here through the act of using complementary colors. But when you want to unify these colors with a color that's completely different, this is where global color grading can be great. And it's extremely simple. We just go down to a solid color fill. And with the solid color fill, I'm just going to select something in the magenta range. I'm not going to select the full potency of magenta. I'm actually going to start somewhere in like a mid-tone bright color of magenta. What this will do is it'll darken the image down and also brighten it up with the color at the same time. 
Once this is done, we just change this to the soft light blend mode. Now there are many blend modes that you can use here. You can try linear light and dropping the fill, hard mix, dropping the fill, or any of the different blend modes and experiment with opacity, blend if, masking, whatever that looks like. But the simplest, mo most easiest form of color grading is just to set it to soft light. Then with this being at its highest potency, as we see here, we can drop the opacity to something like 60% or so. So trace remnants of this magenta color come through in our color grade. Now you can see what we can do here is we can double click on this color and we can change this to any color we want. We can even select colors from within the image and maybe make it blue or maybe make it orange. What we're doing there is we're either si we're siding with one or the other color in the image. We're saying we want to side with orange, so we're going to make this image ultimately more orange and take away from the blue. Now, if we go with the blue, we're siding with the blue and taking away from the orange. So this is where we play this game with complementary colors of which one is going to be more prominent. Or we just say, you know what? Compliments. Uh, I see what you're doing there, but I'm going to go off on my own and I'm going to go off on my own little tangent. I'm going to say, instead of one of you getting the better of the other, I'm going to pick something in this magenta range here. That way we can unify the colors, pull them together using a seemingly different color. So when it rests on top of the image, there's trace elements of the magenta there that just helps elaborate and make the oranges and the blues flourish in a different way that makes them feel like they're cohesive instead of separate or working against each other. This is where color grading is a fantastic option and using something like magenta is great. As you can see, not only do I use it in my skies, I also use it as a global color grade over the entire image. The beauty of this is that as you move this slider, you can see what different colors in this range are going to do for you on the specific image that you have chosen. Now we can side still with one or the other color. If we move magenta closer this way, we're getting a more blue magenta or a violet form of magenta, a blue violet form of magenta. If we move it this way, we're getting a more red violet form of magenta. This sides with the orange, this sides with the blue while still being different. And that's what makes global color grading so unique. I received a plethora of emails from my subscribers telling me about the Pantone color of the year. Viva Magenta, long live Magenta. I'm really glad that this was selected for 2023. And now you know five different ways that you can use Magenta in your workflow right now in Photoshop. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today. If you want more tips and tricks on color grading, please click this playlist right here.